Hello, today we're going to be talking about reasons for the outbreak of World War II in the Asia-Pacific region. Okay, in the previous lessons, we have broadly studied certain things about Japan. For example, Japan's ambitions to establish itself, its plans to modernize and industrialize itself, as well as the fact that Japan was enduring discrimination at this point of time by the Western powers. Okay, if you're not sure, refer to the Washington Naval Conference in 1921. So these are going to be our lesson objectives for today. Explain how the economic crisis in Japan led to the outbreak of World War II, Japan's expansionist policy, weakness of the LON, and how Japan's worsening relation with USA. When you study this, I've mentioned this in class as well, always think back to the same ideas, that, the same problems that Germany was facing. Okay, in the reasons for the outbreak of World War II in Europe, we have Hitler's expansionist policy. So in Japan, we have Japan's expansionist policy. Weakness of the LON appears in both Germany and Japan. And we talk, when we talk about the economic crisis in Japan, you can link back to the problems that Germany was facing under the Weimar government. So in many ways, they are similar to one another. Okay, but always make it a point to distinguish the two of them. So let's first look at the economic crisis. When we want to study the economic crisis, we have to think back to what was the crisis, what were people unhappy about, and what was the government doing to solve the economic crisis. Of course, if the government was doing something and it had been successful, then Japan may not have needed or rather may not have had a reason to go across to carry out its expansionist policy. So what was the situation? There was a huge increase in population in Japan from 45 million in 1900 to 64 million by 1930. So within 30 years, there was a 20 million jump in population size. Then the question is, how do you think this led to the outbreak of World War II? If there are more people, what do they need? Okay, they need more food, they need more resources. If they are unable to find it in Japan, where do they go? They go outside of their country, right? So the economic crisis in Japan actually encouraged the Japanese to pursue the Japanese expansionist policy. Likewise, there was a shortage of land for farming, uh, there was a shortage of rice, and there was also labor-intensive farming. So at this point of time, Japan was still kind of backwards. Okay, they were still using labor-intensive farming, and they were not able to catch up to the the need for food to be produced at a faster rate considering that there is a large or rather high increase in population. So with that too, we can come to the idea that it was because of the economic crisis in Japan that Japan needed to pursue an expansionist policy. And then you also have to remember that in 1929, the Great Depression occurred. Yes, the Great Depression occurred in the USA, however, it affects many other countries that were dependent on the USA. So when the Great Depression occurred, USA and Britain pursued a policy of protectionism. So they encouraged, or sorry, they, they banned imports that were coming in, and at the same time, they carried out taxation on Japanese exports such as silk. So this again affected Japan's economy because they were not able to get the kind of profit that they needed to get. So all in all, these three these three ideas, okay, they all contribute to the problems of the, the, they all contribute to the economic crisis going on in Japan, and this encouraged them to carry out the Japanese expansionist policy. Then we have to question, why is it that they had to carry out the expansionist policy instead of depending on their government to solve these issues? At this point of time, there were many different political, political parties within the government, and this made it very unstable. Uh, sorry, this made it very unstable. At the same time, the part the government was very corrupt and there's frequent assassination. So the government itself was unreliable and they could not be trusted on to solve the economic crisis that was going on in Japan. So in 1932, martial law was um, enforced and the military, the Japanese military gained power of Japan. So I briefly went through how the answer to this question already, which is the fact that the economic crisis encouraged Japan's ex expansionist policy. Of course, when we talk about the outbreak of World War II, you always have to bring in USA and Pearl Harbor because that was the signifying period of time in which World War II really broke out in the Asia-Pacific region. 
Then we move on to our second factor, which is Japan's expansionist policy. Japan's expansionist policy can be both an action by its own, where I mean it is because of Japan's expansionist pol policy that World War II occurred, or it can be a reaction. What do I mean by reaction? It is because of the economic crisis in Japan, which caused Japan's expansionist foreign policy leading to the outbreak of World War II. So it is up to you how you want to decide what this particular policy is going to be on. Would you like it to be your point or would you like it to be your explanation? I leave it up to you. So Japan's expansionist foreign policy, they needed more resources and in order to get these resources, they took control of nearby territories. So first up we have Taiwan, they went to Taiwan for sugar, they went to Choson, Korea which is for cotton and wool, and last but not least they took over Manchuria for mineral and wheat. At the same time, it was not just the fact that they got these resources, but it was also a strategic move because it was access to defense. Okay, by getting more land, they are protecting themselves. If you can see in this image here, Manchuria, Korea are all going to be very strategic locations if they ever want to expand their territory. And at the same time, it will be difficult for other countries to get to Japan without access to countries such as Korea. So what else was Japan's expansionist foreign policy about? At the root of it, they wanted equality and recognition. Remember the Washington Naval Conference and the discrimination they faced? Okay, they wanted to build a strong Asian empire, so they wanted to build a greater East Asia co-prosperity sphere where they would expel European colonial powers and replace them with satellite states. But at the same time, it was not just the whole idea of, you know, Asians for Asians, but it was also the fact that they could get resources from Asian countries. So for example, they could get rubber and oil from Malaya and Indonesia. Southeast Asians themselves were very unhappy with colonial powers as well and there were people who wanted the Asia for Asians idea. So I leave it to you whether or not you want to think that Japan carried out the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere sincerely. By that I mean did they really want to join the Asian for Asians or was it just a way for them to get the support of Asians? Can I leave that decision up to you? So the question then is how did Japan's expansionist foreign policy lead to the outbreak of World War II? By expanding their territory, it made them stronger and more able to fight, which means that they could now attack places such as the USA because they had the capacity to do so. Okay, you can look at it in other ways as well, but this is the very broad gist of it. Then we move on to our third factor, which is the League of Nations and what they did. Okay, this picture is a very good picture at telling you what exactly was happening when Japan and China were fighting. So look at the League of Nations, okay? these are all the Western powers. They are just looking at Japan and China fighting without actually doing anything. Yes, they are pointing fingers, but they are not actually stepping into the conflict to stop whatever is going on. And on the other hand, this man here is USA. So you can see how USA is very strong. He holds his, he holds his weight on its own by having a one-man show. And yet he is not part of the League of Nations and that also makes him weaker. You see how the League of Nations is also kind of telling USA to go and do something about it instead of stepping into the conflict while they are already having a very terrible fight over here. So this picture actually summarizes the entire weakness of the League of Nations but let me go through it in a bit more depth. So what was the incident? Okay, The first incident you have to know of is the Mukden incident. There was a bomb blast near the Japanese-owned rail owned railway New Mukden. The Japanese army blamed the Chinese nationalists for the bomb blast and this later escalated into an invasion of Manchuria on 19 September 1931. China was too preoccupied with its own civil war so it did not want to send its forces into Manchuria and later Japan would create a new satellite state, at state known as Manchukuo basically in Manchuria, okay, but this is like the Japanese form, the Japanese, um, the new identity of Manchuria controlled by the Japanese. So what did China do? Remember, they did not want to be completely involved in the war because they were preoccupied. So China and the other great powers did not recognize Manchukuo and they actually appealed to the League of Nations. So what the League of Nations did was they, they carried out this investigation, okay, it was known as the Litton Report. And according to this report, the Japanese army's response to the Mukden incident went far beyond self-defense. 
So they condemned Japan for invading Manchuria. They condemned Japan at the, at the same time they refused to recognize Manchukuo. But the problem with this was that although they condemned Japan, they did not enforce anything on Japan. So they did not send military forces into Manchuria to try and get Japan back out of Manchuria. At the same time, they were ineffective because although they condemned Japan, Japan continued to just stay in Manchuria. And in the League of Nations itself, what happened was the Japanese delegation walked out of the assembly and later Japan herself just left the League of Nations in 1933. So this really highlights to you the weakness of the LON over here. And then we have the Second Sino-Japanese War. This is another incident which, in which the League of Nations was ineffective. It's known as the Marco Polo Bridge incident. So Japanese were carrying Japanese troops were carrying out training exercises. There were shots fired and the Chinese retaliated. So one Japanese soldier was missing and the Japanese demanded to search the town. However, the Chinese said that they will search themselves and they will only allow one Japanese to follow them. Obviously, the Chinese didn't want the Japanese to enter their territory and the Japanese were not willing to just send one man over. So later, because they could not come to an agreement, the Japanese troops tried to force their way in and eventually this led to a full-scale war between the Chinese and the Japanese in 1937. So what did they do in this case? China once again appealed to the LON. However, the Western powers were very preoccupied with developments in Europe. Okay, if you remember in 1937, in Germany, in Europe, Hitler was already expanding very quickly and they only wanted to provide aid to the Chinese when they heard about news of the Nanking Massacre. Okay, for this, you can go and read up the article that I gave you and think about why is it that they stepped in so late. So then we go back to our essential question. How did the weakness of the League of Nations contribute to the outbreak of World War II in the Asia-Pacific region? The weakness of the League of Nations showed the Japanese that the LON was incapable of stopping them, which made them bolder in their efforts and made them, and rather encouraged them in their aggressive expansionist policy, leading to their bombing of Pearl Harbor. Fourth factor, Japan's worsening relationship with USA. Roosevelt's action spoke of the need for aggressor nations to be quarantined. Okay, remember, although USA in the early stages was not completely involved in war, they were getting worried about Germany becoming stronger and Japan becoming stronger. So in 1939, they cancelled the 1911 commercial treaty with Japan, placing restrictions on Japanese trade with USA. They didn't want to sponsor Japanese expansionist policy efforts, so they slowly started cutting ties, cutting economic ties with Japan. And at the same time, they placed the trade embargo on Japan when Japan invaded Vietnam in 1940. They banned the export of steel, scrap iron, and fuel. This severely affected uh, Japan's economy that was dependent on the trade with USA. So this point can also be considered as part of the economic crisis that Japan was facing. Secondly, there was also war in Europe. War in Europe significantly weakened British and French defence in the Asia-Pacific and Europeans were preoccupied by war in Europe. This provided Japan an opportunity to expand itself. And last but not least, we have the attack on Pearl Harbor, 7 December 1941. The Japanese targeted the US Pacific Fleet in Hawaii. USA had placed his Pacific Fleet in Hawaii to deter Japanese aggression into Southeast Asia okay, because they had the sea and air power to defend SEA. So Japan bombed the Pacific Fleet so that they could get access into the Southeast Asian territory so, as well as also so that they can carry out the Greater East Asian Co-Prosperity Sphere. So these are the two reasons. Okay, In depth it would be at a particular stage, right before they bombed Pearl Harbor, Japan had to choose before, between withdrawing from China and attacking USA because they were facing a lot of pressure from the Western powers. The Japanese did not want to draw from China because they, would con they considered it embarrassing. And at the same time, the Japanese Navy and Army Chiefs advised the Emperor that their stockpile oil reserves would run out within two years. So they had to attack USA so that they can get access to resources in the Southeast Asian territory. For them, it was a matter of either attack USA or be embarrassed. Okay, so how did Japan's worsening relationship with USA lead to the outbreak of World War II? This is quite self-explanatory and I'm running out of time, so I'm not going to go through this now. 
So in essence, we have these four factors and that will be all.